I know that you want to get a high paying remote job, so today I will teach you the steps you have to follow to get it. I have been a game developer for the past 4 years and I have been looking for a remote job since then, so I will teach you the exact tips you have to follow to get them. Moreover, there are a lot of myths we'll break down and a lot of strategies that are in nowhere but in this video. Let's start. The first step is to improve your skills. It may seem quite obvious this step because you may think, okay, yes, I am improving my skills, I'm creating some games, uh, I, I am taking some courses, etc. But actually improving your skills isn't only about creating projects and creating courses, it has much more uh, things that we have to consider. First of all, the first thing that you really have to consider is the amount of projects that you create. Because, for example, one monthly project, for example, will be the least that you would have to create. And I mean, uh, on a monthly basis, you should at least be uploading one game to any uh, store page. Because this will, um, this will help you to not only to improve your skills in game development, but also to start showcasing them in real projects that people can start downloading when you are looking for this remote job. Because if you only have published like one or two games in any store page or you even didn't publish it in any store page, it will be quite difficult for the recruiter to actually uh, know your profile and know your skills and know what you are capable of doing since you don't have that much practical experience so the the first step here is to create the most amount of projects that you can and that you can create them uh, as polished as possible in the in the shortest time frame that you can if i were you i would try to create at least one game uh, monthly and ideally two games monthly okay and probably this amount will sound a lot but what you have to firstly focus when you are starting is in creating games that have a strong core gameplay and that secondary mechanics either aren't really included or if they are included, they are a little bit primitive, let's say. They aren't super, super uh, developed. This will allow you to actually showcase the core gameplay that is the most important part of the game and maybe don't waste a lot of time in secondary things. For example, nowadays you don't really have to create your own assets since there are a lot of assets on the internet for free that you can use uh, without actually having to pay, for example. So not only you will save time, uh, but also money on that. So you have to really uh, build a strong core gameplay and let the secondary mechanics be as simple as possible. Because if you're applying for <clears throat> a game development position, probably they aren't really going to be interested in if you created all the assets yourself, if there are a lot of secondary mechanics, probably they will just try out the games, check the core gameplay, and if the core gameplay seems interesting, okay, there you have one point more. Step number two is to build your CV and portfolio. Again, you may already have created a CV or you may already know how a CV is created and the same thing will happen with a portfolio. But the thing is that probably you are doing it wrong or there are some things in your layout that aren't working as they should. So let me show you how an actual game development CV should look like and also a portfolio. So this is my CV and I will quickly go through the different sections of the CV. Uh, secondly, I also recommend you to use a uh, software like Canva because uh, this will allow you to actually have some interesting templates Okay, that will save you a lot of time and you will already have built uh, a layout for you. Um, so the first section right here is like your presentation with some personal data about you, like your email, your phone, uh, where are you, etc. Your photo, then a, a short pretty short paragraph about yourself, the roles that you have, the years of experience that you have, where you live, and maybe some things, let's, let's say, encouraging words or something like that. And then here comes probably the most important section, that is your professional experience, that most people just write, okay, I've been a game developer for this company from this time to time, but they aren't actually showcasing what uh, they have done. Uh, sometimes you may not have actually like the rights to show what you have built with the company but some of the times you will have the chance to showcase so if you have the chance to showcase what you have done or what you are doing 
do it, okay? And the good thing about here Canvas, for example, here have a download button that basically it's gonna redirect the, the person to the Google Play Store. And that will really help us, okay? So in the professional experience, you must have here a link for them to download or to see or try out the projects that you have created. And if you have actually no professional experience in any company, you can just write indie game developer. And here again, you should have a button or something so that people can actually download and try out your games. And finally, let's say that this section over here isn't super important, okay? These are just, uh, let's say, extra stuff over here. And now let's go to the portfolio website. The layout that you have to follow is quite similar to what you may have in your CV. So basically, again, you have like a presentation about yourself and then an about me section, your professional experience. Uh, here have some testimonials, certificates, and also the relevant project. As you can see, the layout and the information showcase is mostly the same, but just in a more dynamic way. Because, for example, here, not only I have... Um, a, a button to download the games but also a video of them so they don't really have to download anything and finally a contact me section the portfolio will be super useful because you can sh just share this link with anybody and they will be able to uh, know more about you without actually having to send any kind of document the tip number three is to massively apply you can't expect to get a remote job if you, you aren't massively applying. And probably you have already heard that uh, you should send one job application per week, one job ap application every 10 days or something like that. But uh, what I can really tell you is that the market is super saturated. Basically, if you look for any uh, job, you will see that there are, have already been hundreds of applicants. So you really... Uh, how to stand out from the crowd, not only with your profile, with your CV, with your skills, with your project, but also with the amount of jobs, because the most jobs that you apply for, the most possibilities you will have in order to actually get it. And how you do it, there are a lot of platforms that will actually help you. But actually, the platform where the most companies are, where the most jobs are, and mostly and more even in game development, I think that is just LinkedIn, okay? And here in LinkedIn, the thing that, that you probably are doing it wrong when it comes to creating your profile, your profile picture, your banner, etc. So let me actually break all this down so that you can have the best LinkedIn profile and this will really help you get your remote job. So first of all, you have to have a banner, okay, just as some something that I have here. Uh, it doesn't have to be super complex and also it shouldn't be super complex. You should have just your name and the positions that you have. And then also maybe some stylish element like this arrow over here that matches the colors. And also your profile picture should match the color of it. The background photo of the background of the of your profile photo should match this thing. So if my banner would be red, okay, my background should also be red, okay? This is just so it gives like a more formal appearance to somebody that is actually visiting our profile. Because if you go to any other profile LinkedIn, Probably the profile picture or doesn't doesn't have a color background. They have let's say random background. They don't have a banner. Of if they have a banner, uh, it's they the colors don't match as here for example. So this will really help stand out of the crowd. Then uh, you also have here in your features section should have some things that are actually relevant for somebody that enters your profile and uh, wants to know something about you. For example, here. Uh, I can showcase that I have over 5,000 subscribers, uh, a game that I have released, an affiliation that I have, etc. Uh, then here in your uh, activity, you should really have uh, been posting about, for example, when you're starting a new position or you have completed a project, because it was really, this will really help the LinkedIn algorithm to actually know uh, when to show you. For example, I have uh, some posts about game development, about uh, content creation. So if somebody here looks for, I don't know, a uh, content creator, YouTuber, game developer, probably as I have a bunch of posts talking about these topics, I may appear on the search results that probably recruiters may look for, I know, Unity game developer, okay? And probably I may appear there, increasing the chances of actually getting this remote job. Also, you have the About Me section and your experience okay so it's quite easy to create one uh and well there are also other sections that are quite easy to actually uh 
feeling but usually how to make sure that you ha are feeling everything incorrectly with the most accurate information possible you can take my profile as an example that i think is quite a good example um but uh yes just i i think that this part over here as this is the first thing that somebody will look at when they enter your profile your banner and profile picture you really have to make sure that you have a good profile picture with a good banner okay and of course all the other fields are super relevant as well so once you have correctly optimized your linkedin profile here you have the job section okay so basically here there isn't much to talk about this thing uh, as you can see, you can look here the title and there are the uh, the city or the the country. So you can basically look for worldwide jobs and well. Then here you can look for any kind of job for some Unity game developer, game developer, etc. And even set an alert for this uh for for this search so that they will send you an email every time there is a new job with this um with these requirements they say with these filters so this will really help you okay but jobs uh, applications will be completely worthless if you don't actually have an optimized profile because if you don't have a good profile picture a good banner a good about me section etc most times recruiters do take a look at your linkedin profile so it's an opportunity to actually showcase what you are tip number four keep the ball rolling and with this, what I exactly mean is that you have to keep up applying the three tips that I have mentioned. You have to still be improving your skills, taking new courses, uh, creating new projects, etc. Then you have to showcase those skills and projects in your CV and your portfolio. So you have to keep them updated, of course. And then with all that, you have to keep on applying for a bunch of jobs, okay? And once you already have that, you will keep the ball rolling, meaning that you will have your profile updated, you will still be applying for a bunch of jobs, and all this uh, will have the impact on you getting eventually your remote job. Because if you're actually applying, improving your skills, etc., eventually you will get a job. Sooner or later, you will, okay? So you can be relaxed in that way. Relax mentally, let's say that you're doing everything that you can and everything that is actually in your hands in order to get that remote job so this is all for today's video i hope that you really enjoyed it you can follow me on linkedin with the link down below that is on the description if you want to connect with me and take a deeper look at my profile so i hope i can see you on the next one remember to like and subscribe if you really enjoyed this piece of content see you on the next one and bye bye